Yeah. So anyway, so you see these way elements and ethers work together. Let's take a tree or a plant. Let's, a tree is a good example. <clears throat> we know the tree is rooted in the earth, right? It's rooted in the elements. It's solid in there. You know, trying to you know, need something like Force 5 Hurricane to pull the thing out. Um, because el elements are rigid and formed like our physical body. But the ethers are mobile, and the ethers are subject to astronomical conditions, such as sunrise and sunset, right, day and night. That's an astronomical condition, the moon. And we can see this in you know, the plant world. So plants, the tops of the plants are rooted in the ethers, right? But the ethers are mobile and ever-changing. Um, you know, so the the top of the tree can move; it can bend in the wind and all that. So, but it's still connected to the ethers because the ethers are in counter space. So, counter space is everywhere. That's what we call a scalar space. You know, scalar transmission. There's no transmission through space like we would think of it. It's like automatically connected wherever this other point is when you have a space scalar connection, just like Tesla's longitudinal worldwide wireless, right? You, you know, I think if they went, of course, like an orthodromic uh, pathway that it would be, which is like great circle pathway, it would calculate out to pi over two times the speed of light. But in effect, you're dealing with a instantaneous transmission because once you're on the other side of the so-called speed limit of light, you know, it, you virtually are instantaneous. So we looked at things like starlight being pro probably instantaneous like that. That doesn't take any time to get here. That these are instantaneous longitudinal transmissions, space scalar.